The topic of high availability often comes up when discussing how best to service customers with our applications, and understandably so. We want to improve resilience by eliminating a single point of failure and increase performance by reducing the strain on our resources. A best practice and common pattern is to spread things out across multiple availability zones. Architectures like this are quite common for the reasons that I just mentioned. At a lower level, these setups are typically fronted by a load balancer that proxies traffic to different upstream servers in their respective locations. As a solution, it seems straightforward. But we need to give ample thought to our architecture because this setup may solve a number of challenges on one hand, but have some costly implications on the other. For example, if your load balancer distributes traffic based on methods like a round robin or a random approach, you may end up incurring higher costs because of all the egress cross zone traffic. In some cases, this may not be the best option for you because of all the costs tied to it. In addition to that, we have to consider the instances running in different AZs where the traffic is headed. How well do those instances align with your workload requirements? Because another common pitfall is wasted compute capacity. You could easily end up paying more for EC2 instances in separate AZs that are underutilized. These kind of architectural implications can be a lot to deal with. Now, we still want redundancy because of all the important benefits that it gives us, but how can we control the use of that redundancy in a way that helps us save on operational costs? I'm going to demonstrate one approach to achieving high availability while managing your costs in Kubernetes. This example will include the use of pod affinity rules, weighted locality load balancing with Istio, and auto scaling with Carpenter. Pod affinity rules allow us to define the relationship between pods, and they inform the Kubernetes scheduler when it's deciding where to place a pod. In this case, I'm going to make use of an anti-affinity rule for my pods with a topology constraint based on availability zones. This means the scheduler will aim to schedule the pods on nodes in different AZs, giving us high availability. As for the load balancing approach, I'm going to use Istio's weighted distribution feature. This will enable me to control how much traffic goes where from a given source based on the percentage that I apply to it, of course. The goal is to route a majority of the traffic coming from the load balancer to a Kubernetes service in the same AZ, which will in turn reduce the cost of egress traffic crossing zones. And lastly, to scale my cluster in the separate AZs, I'm going to use Carpenter. Carpenter is a cluster autoscaler that allows me to provision nodes for workloads based on their requirements. And remember, I want my pods distributed in different zones. So Carpenter will create instances in the relevant AZs for the pods to be successfully scheduled. In addition to that, Carpenter's consolidation feature will provide me with the most affordable instances available whilst meeting the pods requirements. Before I get to the demo, I wanna walk through some of the relevant components that will help you understand how things are working in the background. And I won't go into too much detail with the source code, but it will be available on GitHub. And I'll share links to the relevant documentation for you to go through in your own time. For starters, I've got a manifest file here that contains three deployments. These deployments are different versions of the same application. And the reason I'm doing this is so that it can be easy to identify the results of our load balancing configurations. Each application version will give me a different response for the exact same endpoint. So when I query the Istio Ingress Gateways load balancer and the relevant application endpoint, the response I get is what will help me distinguish the results from the different destinations. Also, you'll notice that I have an anti-affinity rule for any workload matching the particular key value pair that I've specified here. The key is app and the value is express test. In addition to that, this is going to be based on a topology constraint for availability zones. So it will repel the pod replicas spun up by other deployments because they all have the same label. Lastly, you'll notice that they have a node affinity rule to ensure that they are only scheduled to nodes created by Carpenter. And the other deployment configurations have this exact same specification as well. These deployments have a cluster IP service that will forward traffic to their replicas. And because of the selector, it will treat them as if they were the same application and version, which is what I want for this particular test. Now let's move on to the Istio configurations with two particular custom resource definitions, the virtual service and the destination rule. First off, I've got a virtual service that is responsible for routing traffic that comes from the Istio ingress gateway. And you can create multiple gateways 
In my case, I've created a gateway called Express Test Gateway, which is for this particular application. And as you can see under the routing rules, it will route traffic for this test URI to the cluster IP service for my deployment. After routing occurs, we can apply further rules using the destination rule resource. Let's pay close attention to the distribution property under the locality load balancer settings. You can see that I'm setting certain weights for the different AZ destinations based on where the traffic is coming from. If it's coming from EU West 1A, then the most then most of the traffic should go to the upstream service in EU West 1A. And this is the same principle applied for the other AZs in order to reduce cross zone traffic. Lastly, we're going to look at the provisioner for our Carpenter nodes. The provisioner is a custom resource definition that allows us to configure how Carpenter spins up the nodes and lets us apply some parameters that are fitting for the workload. Let's have a look at a few of the properties here. So you'll notice that I have consolidation enabled so that Carpenter can continuously attempt to reduce cluster costs with the nodes that it provides. And in addition to that, if we take a look at the requirements section over here, you'll see that it can provision nodes in all three availability zones for EU West 1A. I've omitted certain instance categories and I've specified the CPU capacity that it's allowed to provide for EC2 instances that get created. And there's more you can do with it, but at this point, that's all we're gonna be concerned about. And we can now finally take a look at the demo. If we take a quick look at K9S, you can see that I've got three replicas running for this application as expected a single replica for each of the deployments. And if we look on the far right, you can see that each of these is running on a separate host. But let's see which availability zones that these hosts are in. I'm going to fetch the nodes that have been provisioned by Carpenter for this application in EU West 1A. As we can see, there are no hosts for this application in EU West 1A. So let's have a look at the other AZs. So Carpenter has created two nodes in EU West 1B and one in EU West 1C. And if I take a quick look at the EKS node viewer and select nodes created by Carpenter, I can see the instances provided and how much it will cost me on a monthly basis. So as we can see over here, I've got three T3 medium instances that would cost me about $91.104 on a monthly basis. Now I'm going to run a simple script that will make 20 requests to the Istio Ingress gateway. Now the, the 20 requests are just an arbitrary value. You could obviously increase or change that value if you see fit. And the Istio Ingress gateway uses a classic load balancer running in three AZs, EU West 1A through to C. And this will show us if our destination rule configurations are working as expected. Now remember, we want traffic coming from a certain AZ to send traffic to a service in the same AZ. All right, so if we take a look at the results over here from querying that specific endpoint, we can see that we have three different applications or three different versions of the same application, each of them giving us the response simple node app working, but then we have two that have a suffix that specify the version, v1.12 and v1.14. These results don't exactly help us in terms of seeing that our destination rule configurations are working as, as they should. So one way to verify that is to update the destination rules. And I'm going to send most of the traffic to EU West 1A, regardless of the source, just as a test. And there you have it. You can see that the destination rule is working correctly. So I can revert the changes that I just made to the right configurations of sending traffic from a given source to a destination service in the same AZ. And that brings things full circle. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, to learn more about the concepts and projects that I've spoken about in this video, please take a look at the links in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, leave a comment letting us know and be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that useful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more.